Hey there, welcome back to my channel where we delve into thought-provoking ideas and stories. Let's begin. Thomas Corey, the author of the book Rich Habits, for which I spent five years researching the daily habits of 177 self-made millionaires and 128 poor individuals. I discovered that a person's daily habits reveal whether they can achieve success in life. Thomas's research is truly a blessing for anyone seeking success and wealth through changing their behavioral habits. Today, we'll summarize nine things that rich people do, but poor people are unaware of. Before we begin, please don't hesitate to like and follow. Your support is our greatest motivation to continue producing this show. The first thing is setting goals. In school, we often hear the saying, a deadline is a productivity booster. When facing the deadline for assignment submissions, even the least studious students will work diligently until the last moment. Assignments have due dates, jobs have deadlines, and even our lives have a final day. Being alive means completing tasks before each deadline. However, many people forget to set deadlines for their dreams. Napoleon Hill, the pioneer of modern success studies, once said, a goal is a dream with a deadline. Without a deadline, we easily lose motivation and become lazy. The most significant difference between wealthy and poor individuals is that the wealthy always write down their goals and the dates they want to achieve them. This way, they have enough drive to quickly reach their objectives, while the poor only remain at the stage of wishful thinking. The second thing is lifelong learning. Many highly educated poor people share a common trait. Once they leave school and enter the workforce, they stop expanding their knowledge. They become narrowly focused on their job and consciously ignore any knowledge unrelated to their profession. Their subconscious belief is that becoming an expert in their field ensures job stability. This belief is not entirely wrong, but it's far from enough. Broadening one's knowledge doesn't mean a financial manager should study quantum mechanics. It means acquiring practical knowledge that helps personal growth, interpersonal relationships, financial literacy, and even political understanding. A wide range of knowledge helps a person view issues more comprehensively and reshapes their thinking. The third thing is detachment. Detachment has become a popular term in recent years. It doesn't simply mean discarding unused belongings, but advocates for an organized lifestyle, work approach, and mindset. Many poor individuals are not lazy. In fact, they might be even busier than the wealthy. They claim to have endless tasks every day and no time to tidy up. Their minds are chaotic, and when they return home, they just want to relax on the sofa and not think about anything. However, having a tidy office environment allows you to quickly find the files you need. A clear mindset enables more organized and logical work. Wealthy individuals often spend extra time organizing their environment and thoughts. They don't hesitate to invest time in arranging their ideas, which is the secret to their efficiency at work. The fourth thing is regular positive motivation. Napoleon Hill introduced the concept of how the subconscious mind helps people achieve success in his well-known work, Think and Grow Rich. If you want success, you must reflect on the joy that success brings. If you desire wealth, think about the various benefits it brings. Regularly motivating oneself positively allows dreams and aspirations to take root in our subconscious, unconsciously inspiring our actions. This is a principle well understood by the wealthy, but often overlooked by the poor, who might see it as something akin to a pyramid scheme or brainwashing. However, brainwashing is not inherently negative. It depends on the content being instilled. Repeating positive affirmations and vocalizing one's dreams every day is far better than complaining about everything around and filling one's subconscious with negativity. The fifth thing is responding to messages. We live in an age of information explosion, receiving countless text messages and emails every day. Many assume that wealthy people are too busy to reply to emails and messages. However, the truth might surprise you. Responding to a message simply requires a few taps of a finger and won't take much time. The return on investment can be substantial. Successful individuals don't check their emails or messages haphazardly throughout the day, but allocate specific time to review and respond to them. They also mark important events, such as sending holiday greetings or birthday wishes on their calendars as reminders. Sometimes, maintaining interpersonal relationships depends on seemingly insignificant messages. And that's why the road to wealth widens for the rich and narrows for the poor, often leaving the latter isolated. The sixth thing is earning future money. The poor often seek quick money, while the wealthy focus on earning future money. Earning future money isn't mysterious. 
The simplest way is to allocate a portion of your current funds proportionally into expanding your assets. Assets can be real estate, businesses, or stocks. Holding money in your hands will quickly lead to waste without generating any additional value. In contrast, investing money in assets that continuously grow will result in increasing returns in the future. Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, once said, People don't like to think long term because they are eager to solve immediate economic problems. In reality, even wealthy individuals face economic problems to varying degrees. However, even during their toughest times, they don't halt their long-term investments. Rich individuals don't solely focus on resolving immediate problems, but prioritize building a healthy wealth acquisition path to prevent future economic troubles. The seventh thing is paying yourself first. The concept of paying oneself first originated from George Clayson's book, The Richest Man in Babylon, written a century ago. Even today, it remains an unspoken rule among the wealthy. Paying yourself first means that when you receive a sum of money, the first portion should be allocated to areas that contribute to your financial freedom. It's a straightforward notion, but many people still struggle to implement it. The simplest example of paying yourself first is saving money. You deduct the amount you want to save from your income first, and then use the remainder to pay bills. Robert Kiyosaki introduced a slightly more advanced approach. He has a financial statement with categories like assets and expenses. When they receive income, they prioritize putting a portion into assets, such as investments in real estate, businesses, or stocks. Afterward, the remaining money is used to cover expenses. As the asset portion grows continuously, their financial capacity strengthens, and they gradually rely on passive income generated by their assets to live a prosperous life, achieving financial freedom, and possibly early retirement. In contrast, poor individuals' assets remain meager, and some might not have any assets at all, forcing them to rely on extended labor to earn limited income. Once their work stops, they might depend on their children or government support for retirement, becoming entirely passive in their financial situation. The eighth thing is purchasing high-quality goods. The belief that the more expensive, the better, isn't necessarily true. However, extremely cheap items often lack in quality. For instance, in London, one can frequently find convenience stores selling umbrellas for $1.05 each. While they may serve as a quick fix during emergencies, these umbrellas are typically black, have flimsy canopies, and weak frames that break with a gust of wind. On the other hand, a regular foldable umbrella in stores costs around $1.20 but comes with a variety of colors and can easily last three to five years. In a city like London, where rain and wind are common for about four days a week, which option truly offers more value? Poor individuals often believe they are getting a bargain, but they fail to realize that a good quality item will last much longer, saving them money in the long run. Besides the design and appearance, a high-quality product minimizes the embarrassment and inconvenience of sudden breakdowns. As the wealthy typically make fewer purchases due to the durability of their products, they don't clutter their homes with excess storage, creating a tidier living environment. The ninth thing is maintaining a low profile. Do you recognize the elderly man in the photo? He's Karl Albrecht, the founder of Aldi, Germany's largest supermarket chain. He has been referred to as the most low-key businessman in Germany, Despite being rumored to be one of the 25 richest people globally, he only left behind two photos throughout his life. After his passing, there was almost no media coverage, and his funeral was a small, private affair. In contrast, poor individuals often enjoy discussing others' gossip tirelessly, while wealthy people focus on exploring new ideas and business models to acquire more wealth. Those who become wealthy are genuinely intelligent individuals who silently work hard and strive for excellence. By the time others are catching their breath, they have already broken free from their old circles, moving on to higher levels. Everyone has the opportunity to become a millionaire, and the key lies in whether you are willing to cultivate wealthy habits. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so you never miss any of our future uploads. We love creating engaging content for our amazing community, and your support means the world to us.